Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine podcast, uh, where I break down the latest scuba diving news and things that have piqued my interest over the previous week. Uh, not a lot of news this week. It's been pretty quiet. Um, and I've been quite busy as well, admittedly, so I haven't been looking at the news quite as much as I normally would. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the things that I've picked out, uh, a, a wreck hunting ship has toppled over in dry dock, which injured 33, and Shearwater have teamed up with Dive Track for a rather interesting collaboration. A lot of people um, keep asking about, like, underwater GPS and that kind of things, and we're almost there. Um, there there's a whole video on it and I'm going to do a, a quick chat about it but yeah I think this might be a, a, a rather quick one this week so yeah let's let's dive straight in so the first one is yeah that a, a, a ship that searches for shipwrecks um, the the expedition ship RV Petrel has injured at least 33 people in falling over in dry dock in a major incident in Scotland and is described as one of the most important marine archaeological exploration vessels in history so yeah and when you see pictures of it it's almost like listing over at 45 degrees this this thing toppled over uh, where it obviously shouldn't have so between 2017 and 2019, uh, Petrol was actually responsible for the discovery of a large number of historic World War II warships uh, lying like deep, deep down in the Pacific Ocean, like kilometers deep. This is where this uh, the, the Petrol is like looking for shipwrecks. Uh, petrol is 75 meters long and this thing is huge and it became dislodged from its holding in strong winds in Imperial Dock in Leith in Edinburgh around 8.30 in the morning and the ship fell over onto its starboard side at an angle of 45 degrees injuring large numbers of people and the extent of the damage to the actual ship and the surrounding docklands is still being assessed. Uh, emergency services responded, uh, casualties rushed to hospital um, and are being uh, treated at the scene, or sorry, were being treated at the scene. And according to reports, there have been around 50 refurbishment workers on the vessel at the time. And, uh, and yeah, a large number of them were, um, were injured. So yeah, it's, um, it, it's surprising news. And even down, cause I, I live in like the, the South of England, there's, there was quite strong winds and we are having quite powerful, um, like gusty winds, but yeah, you would have thought that, um, they, they would have like strapped it up enough that even, um, even a boat of this size wouldn't have toppled over, but unfortunately it did. Hopefully there wasn't too much damage and um, and too, too many like serious injuries. Um, but yeah, if, if you're working on a uh, on a ship and it suddenly lifts over 45 degrees and then stops, yeah, anybody on board is going to be thrown around. But um, yeah, yeah, that was um, that was one news story that um, uh, that caught my interest this week. The other one was that Shearwater, the, uh, the dive computer manufacturer from Canada, are working with Dive Track, who are, um, I, I think, a, a part of um, a Sonar Dine. And they've got this collaboration with the Shearwater Petrol dive computer. Um, no real link between the, uh, the previous story. Um, they, they're just both named the, uh, the Petrol. And what dive track is is you kind of have this separate canister that you attach to somewhere on your body and a cable runs to the petrol computer and plugs in because the petrol can have uh, like fisher connections so you can um, sort of plug in things in the water and it basically gives you underwater like text communications as well as a like rudimentary diver GPS. So you can have someone on the boat and they've got a special rigged up laptop and on their screen, it can show you the diver's locations because on the, the back of the boat or somewhere on the boat and, uh, and dipping into the water, you've got the, uh, the like GPS and whatnot and there's a sensor that gets dipped into the water and then that's always talking to this dive track and 
That way, whoever's on that laptop, they can type messages and send it to certain dive computers and it pops up on your screen or vice versa. If someone um, like a student, for example, wants to end the dive for whatever reason, they can send a message and that goes to the, uh, the laptop and then whoever's manning the laptop can then send either a, a group message to everyone saying, okay, everyone, let's end the dive. And they can also, using the uh, the built-in compass on the petrol, they can say, oh, okay, we, we've got a lost diver. Uh, we know exactly where they are. If you, the, the instructor, turn to 260 degrees and swim 10 meters or however far, you'll reconvene with them and the message pops up on their computer and then they can um, like reunite with the lost student. Clever, clever things. Um, and yeah, it's quite interesting technology. We have seen this before in some other dive computers. It's not like the very first ever time we, we've seen anything like this, but it is quite interesting to see it in sheer water dive computers and it is nice to see it in more dive computers um, that hopefully it's going to be a, a more frequent thing. You do tend to have or tend to require that uh, like mother computer, the, the one that's on the shore or on the back of the boat, the, uh, the laptop out of the water, but in future maybe they will work out a system where you can have something that maybe one of the diver toes behind them on a, um, uh, on a D uh, on a SMB or something, but interesting. Um, and like with, um, I think it was Suex, Suex have a, a GPS like DSMB buoy that you can send up from depth and it's got a cable in the like in the line that goes up to the surface and then you plug that into the the computer on your uh, on your dpv and it comes up with a uh, like gps map um so yeah lot, lots of clever underwater navigating things are coming out and yeah if you go to uh, to sonar dine sonar dine uh, which is a d-y-n-e uh their uh, their youtube channel they've got a video that uh, that went up with a col uh, collaboration of sheer we sheer water dive computers and uh, and yeah it breaks down all the clever things that it can do and um yeah clever clever interesting technology but that really was about it to be honest um it's it hasn't been a well from from my perspective it hasn't been a huge like news week um I did see the new colorways for the Aqualung Axiom BCDs are starting to pop up on dive center shelves. Uh, for the women, they've got their like black, white, and gold BCD in the uh, in the Axiom. Aqualung are really leaning into this for their um, like women's dive range, this like white and gold, which I think is quite nice. I think it uh, it works quite well. It's not overwhelmingly white because as soon as most divers and myself included we see di uh, white nylon cordura um, I just think about the green waters that I go diving in and just go oh how long is that going to stay white but it's it's relatively minimal uh, on this and the uh, the gold detailing isn't too bling um, it's just little accents uh, here and there in the logos which is which is quite nice quite smart I do uh, I do quite like that in the men's version they've got the uh, the new blue petrol or petrol blue I think they call it and yeah, very smart, just new colorways for uh, for 2023. Um, and they're continuing throughout the rest of their range. So if you look at the rash vests, uh, the, the women's ones have that white and gold detailing on it. And the, uh, the men's ones, petrol blue as well. And it continues on through the, through the masks and, uh, and fins and stuff. Um, that's about it as far as new equipment. What have I been working on? I've mainly been working on my HSC medical that uh, that I needed to renew. That was on uh, that was on Tuesday. Uh, for, for anyone who doesn't know, here in the UK, if you need if you need to do any kind of work under the water, you have to do a lot of serious like HSE um, tests and qualifications and whatnot. And it, it's been a while since mine expired, so I had to redo them. So yeah, you have your HSE medical to make sure you're you're fit and able to um, to go under the water. And yeah, they, they really do literally put you through your paces. Uh, it starts off with 
uh, paperwork, uh, a good amount of paperwork, obviously. Then you have your hearing test. So they, they put you in this not so soundproof booth, but it's supposed to be soundproof. And you get these headphones and you, you're supposed to press a button every time you hear a tone. And the tones change, and then the the like volume of the tones change, and for the left ear, the right ear, and you have to press a button every time you supposedly uh, hear a, a tone. So they're checking your ears. Uh, I did a, a color blindness test, eye tests, and whatnot, as well as like lung functions. Of course, that's quite important to make sure that your lungs are working quite um, uh, quite properly, and they test you a good few times on this both before and after exercise uh the exercise in my case has always been um oh what do you call it you get those steps that you see in gyms and it's like the bleep test there's just this um uh, metronome tick and you, you have to step up step up step down step down to to a certain rhythm and the rhythm just keeps getting faster and faster and they're monitoring your uh, your heart rate and then of course afterwards your uh, your recovery rate and yeah by the time it gets to like stage five it's like tick 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 and you're like oh Stu, you, you've already been doing this for a good like eight minutes um so uh, so yeah I was, I was sweating after that but that's that's the whole point of it um and yeah, a, a few other tests to uh, to make sure you you are fit and healthy, and uh, and I I was and I am apparently, uh, and also uh, first aid, uh, emergency first aid, and all that kind of stuff. I had to redo uh, that was on uh, Thursday, so yeah, all the all the CPR, AEDs, uh, urgent bleeding, all that kind of stuff, uh, making sure that um, yeah I can. I can do emergency first aid. So that was my main focus this week and, uh, and brushing up on skills because even if you've done it like a few years back, it is important to get back into it as well and to keep those um, like sort of tickets current because things change. And it was quite interesting talking with the, the first aid instructor over what had changed. The, the main one that changes quite frequently is, is CPR, what the, uh, the ratio is. And the current ratio is 30 chest compressions to two rescue breaths. And because I think that's even changed since I first did, um, uh, since I first did mine. And just current recommendations and like new equipment and things that are coming out. So, um, so yeah, I had to, had to redo that with, uh, with code blue. Um, my HC Medical was uh, Midlands Diving Chamber. Uh, they, they've got a wonderful setup up there. They have this dedicated um, uh, like cabin that has all of the um, like medical testing equipment just all in one space so the doctor can uh, can go through all of your medical just all there and then. And, uh, and yeah, cold, uh, code blue in, um, uh, in London and yeah, the, again, lovely facilities and uh, and all of the like Rosassa Annie dolls and uh, and like some of these things. And you're looking at these huge penetrating wound uh, like mannequins. You think, oh, this poor fella. Uh, look at all of this stuff. He's got holes in him to uh, to pack the wounds and all that stuff. And um, yeah, it's, it is important. And if you haven't done a, a first aid course, it's, it is definitely worth doing it especially when diving and for more like scuba specific things yeah have a look at uh, at code blue in um, in west london they do um, uh, they do more scuba specific courses uh, from dan divers alert network and uh, and a few others but um yeah it, it's, it's definitely worth re-qualifying and yeah that was really it it's um a whirlwind of a week um because yeah, I was mainly focusing on those uh, those requalifying and uh, and brushing up on my uh, my skills, making sure I'm up to date. And I was I was looking around the um, the usual like news articles that I tend to uh, to look at for scuba diving. Couldn't see a great deal. It's been a relatively quiet week, which um, is both good and bad. It uh, it means that nothing bad has happened. No one's been hurt or injured. However, it also means that nothing like overly interesting has been done. I couldn't see any new world records. Um, no uh, like real 
obvious new equipment. I had a look through all the manufacturers on their like social media sites and their websites. Couldn't see a great deal of new announcements. All this has been done. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, one thing that I will note is you'll probably see um, a lot of videos in the future, especially like the Saturday ones. They may be replaced with just standard Ask Mark Q and A's, uh, just because I haven't had enough time with all the uh, the requalifications re and whatnot. Uh, I haven't had a great deal of time to uh, to write any scripts, and this is on the um, I'm still on the rebound after the uh, the go diving show, trying to get all of that footage organised. So uh, so don't be surprised if some of the Saturday videos are just Ask Marks. Um, that's kind of the, the real easy content for me to uh, to do and, uh, and don't require too much um, like editing neither. So yeah, for, for the next couple of weeks, uh, just, just forgive me. Um, I'm doing, doing the best I can. I've only got so much time that I can work with, but, um, uh, but yeah, um, that's, that, that really is it. Uh, I'm just waffling now. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, head over to uh, to YouTube and uh, and pop them on any of the videos. It doesn't matter, but as long as you use that Ask Mark hashtag, it, uh, it just makes it a lot easier for me to find it. Um, yeah, head over to scubadivermag.com, as I'm sure everybody does. Uh, and if you're listening to this podcast, if it if wherever you're listening to it allows for some kind of rating like five star or whatever it is uh please give me an honest rating that would be wonderful uh thank you for listening everybody and of course safe diving